Hi, I'm Rilev Khile Mabocha and I'm here with the awesome, legendary musician and all-round musical genius, musical director, vocal coach, music teacher. I don't know how many titles I can give this man, but he's also a dear friend of mine, Mr. RJ Benjamin. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so RJ Benjamin, you now have the fifth story. How are we on the fifth story? Tell us how that title came about. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, it's my fifth album. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, you know, I'm struggling to find a name. It just seems like an obvious name. Uh, yeah. A lot of my albums are biographical because everything I write is uh, experiential. So, you know, like for me, um, this story, which I kind of, would describe it as the fifth telling. It's the fifth edition of the stories that I've told my four albums previously and yeah. also those other stories. And in this story, I'm really just documenting the last four years of my life. So now, you're not the first artist to have come, you know, out of retirement. You, uh -huh. you retired, much like Jay-Z has retired. Yeah. So do tell me firstly, for those that don't know why you did retire in the first place and now why we are sitting here with a what i would describe a very beautiful ep Thank you. so let, let's go back a little bit why did you retire in the first place um well 20 which by the way i find weird because i i always say how does a musician retire how do you not be a musician it's all it's in your soul well look i think just to clarify and i, I and i always say this even when i was retired so yeah because i'm retiring as an artist not as a musician a you mean a recording people, artist as a recording yes artist. yeah okay. um, a lot of people were like you quit you quit the business i never quit the business <laughs> I mean, were they angry at you and they were angry they were like but why is he even writing songs for people or why is he on that tv yeah. doing other stuff like he said he quit. I never said I quit. I yeah. said I'm retiring as an artist. Yeah. And it's specifically because I think as an artist, I, I suppose I had like a mental breakdown or uh, emotional breakdown. I don't yeah. know what you want to call it, but yeah. I was done. I was spent. I just, it's, it's, it's tough being an artist. Um, for me, I love the process of making music. Yeah. I don't like the process of getting it out there. Um, yeah. It's stressful to me. It's, it freaks me out, you know? And, I think like the wrong kind of emotions start to sort of seep in, which is why are they not playing me? And you become like bitter because this person wouldn't play you and this person doesn't like you and this critic said this and you know, I mean it's things that all artists, artists deal with. Personally, I actually had had enough, but I think, you know, beyond that and at the time, I, I couldn't really think of it clearly looking back now. It was, be, it was more than that. It was, was more than blaming other people. Yeah. It, I realized that, you know, uh, this big house song came came out called "Change the World." I think 2008. No, no one knows that song. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, look, <laughs> a, few, a few other people might know it. I, yes. I, I, you know, I'm okay with you not knowing. It. And and um, you know, I, I was sort of left with a, a decision to make, and that's by both the record company I was with at the time yeah. and. Um, you know, for myself, which is, you know, I, even, even then, even when I got a new record deal off the back of that song, um, in my head I was like, I'm still doing what I was doing before, as yeah. far as albums are concerned, and that's uh, soul music, it's a bit of jazz, it's a bit of funk, it's a bit of R&B, it's all of that rolled into one, that's what I always feel I've represented, uh, and, and that's the kind of music I love, and that's the kind of yeah. music I create. Um, but of course, you know, there was this tug of war because uh, the record label and other people were kind of saying, but you must do house music because house music is making you money. Yeah. You just go where the money is. That's, uh, you know, that's what's, what's working. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, realistically speaking, I didn't have to agree with that. Mm. But eventually I, I, I did. I, I, I decided to go that way. But, but now, let, let me just pause there for a second. It was a good song. So on the one hand, you know, to, to the people out there watching right now, to the people listening, mm. you know, a, a part of them are saying, hold on, hold on. Some of us didn't know your amazing first album. We didn't know you did a track with Pitch Black Afro. We didn't know Cry. We didn't know Journey. We didn't know that. We only knew uh, RJ Benjamin when we came out with Out on the Streets. That's when we knew him. So to us, we knew you as a house artist, which, isn't our fault 
So yeah, how would how would you respond to those people who are like, ah, RJ, where's the next house track? Well, you know what? I, I think at that point you either focus then on, on on this brand new market, but in a sense you're lying to them because it's yeah. not really what I was a feature on Change the World. I did not make that track, uh, and realistically, I would not make a track like that. It's not in my in my bones, not in my genes to create music like that. Yeah. And ultimately, uh, you have to create music that represents who you are because you're the only person 20, 30, 40 years down the line who's going to look back on your musical legacy. Um, no one else cares. Mm, you know, mm, but mm. it's it's you and it's your investment. This is an investment in mm. you know for the rest of my life. And I think it's weird. I, I kind of felt guilty <laughs> to myself, to my own integrity, that I went that route. That I decided, okay, I'm going to cater to all these people, and, and this is what they want. Mm, mm. But ultimately, even while I was recording these new house songs and new house tracks, it's very hard being the kind of artist I was and trying to then be something I was not. Mm. Um, or I was almost being dishonest to my soul. Yeah. Um, and while I was recording these songs, while I was making this music, I wasn't making it with 100% love, with 100% of me in it. I was making it because I was like, this is what they want, this is what I must do, this is the formula, and I'm gonna give them that same formula and it's gonna work. So a part of you was cheating yourself but um, you could also say though, you know, let me say to take away the guilt, is m music is for the people. Uh, and, and a part of it, that was, let me say, that was your contribution of giving back. I, I suppose, I suppose, but at the same time, I think in my brain, I, I, was, I was also thinking, well, if I give them this, this is what they're going to assume I do, and that's mm. all. Okay. You know, and, and I didn't like it when someone, I don't know, tweeted me and said, uh, you're a house vocalist or you know um, or things like that you know I didn't like hearing that because I don't think any vocalist to tell you the truth wants to be called a house vocalist you want to be called a vocalist or a good vocalist or a great musician a great artist etc you don't want to be pigeonholed to that degree yeah. I mean that's the, for me it was hard hearing that I didn't like hearing that of course, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that these people yeah. are appreciating me, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm, I'm not a house vocalist. I do so many other things, yeah. you know, I spend my life honing my craft, not so that I could just be called a house vocalist. So, so after this, now you, you reached a point of frustration, which uh, a, lot, a lot of people, and I'm sure you yourself now in hindsight could say, yeah. okay, it, it was personal and you needed the time out. And maybe you, you spoke too hastily by making it too public to say, I'm retired yeah. um, as, as a recording artist mm. and you're going to take a step back. Look, a, a lot of things were happening in my life at that time. Mm. And the music was just one of them. So I had like this sort of mu music career breakdown. Mm. Yes, maybe I wasn't thinking rational. Maybe. Mm. And this is, uh, Are you not. ever thinking rationally? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I am. I think in the um, mind of a creative, it's beautiful that that you can be in a space where you never are because because for you to produce the music you are producing, it's it's. Uh, what was I watching? I was recently watching an episode of Nashville, and one of the 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 characters. One of the lead characters was trying to now write a song, and he suddenly couldn't write because he's like. I'm happy. No, I can't yeah, write. No, I mean, I mean, and he's like, I ones. can't write all of a sudden because I'm not in turmoil. But I don't have heartache. That's the fascinating thing about where I am right now. Yeah. Because I am happy. Yeah. Um, and I am writing lots of songs still. In fact, I'm writing as much as I was before, which is weird because I always thought I had to be sad, brokenhearted, down and out to, to write great music. Mm. Uh, mm. And I'm, I'm in a very good place right now and I'm writing and creating some great music. Okay, so now you're out of retirement. Yeah. You look amazing. Okay. I, I, I mean, really, <laughs> you've been doing well. What What have you been doing? You know, before you came out of retirement. For, okay, for those so, that don't know, right. what were you up to? So ultimately, what what um, you know what retiring uh, did for me is it gave me uh, time to reflect. I had a few tumultuous years 
the, probably the first two years of that, which was rejecting every gig that, that, that came my way, mm -hmm. uh, especially house music gigs. <laughs> uh, at clubs. I didn't want to be the old guy at the club anymore. Um, and, and kind of just reflecting on, on what I did want to do. And I think really, I, before I was an artist, I was a teacher. Um, and, I, uh, and I learned to enjoy and love nurturing talent. I still get a serious kick when I see something that I work with, sorry, someone that I worked with, becoming a great musician, artist, becoming well known. I, I love to see those comments. I get almost more of a kick out of that than when someone compliments me. Uh, of course you do. I mean, you can add Lyra, Toya De Lazy, you have Jay Something, the list is endless that you have tons of uh, very successful artists today that, that can say, hey, RJ Benjamin is, uh, was a teacher of mine at a stage in my life. I mean, look, obviously some people I worked with more than others. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Some that you might like to teach again, maybe? Do you want lessons? Do you <laughs> I would love lessons from you. <laughs> okay, perhaps. I mean, I'm very busy. But... <laughs> You'll make time for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, look, it, it, it's a great kick. But yeah. I think what that sort of that retirement period made me realize is I really want to try and mentor more talent in this country. Find mm. more talent, develop more talent, discover more talent, yeah. get them out there. Um, and then it just became a, a case of, especially with, you know, discussions with myself and my management too, were like, well, now that you're retired, thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> thanks. What, what are you going to be doing? Um, and, you know, we really spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to then get myself out there. Do I go back to teaching uh, or lecturing? Um, in my mind, I wanted something that was uh, going to give me sort of a broader, um, how can I say, influence, mm. especially in South Africa. Mm. Uh, I believe that we have loads of talent here, yeah? and, and it's weird how when you put yourself out there in the universe, suddenly things start to happen. And I suppose the first real thing was uh, being called up as uh, to be the musical director on a TV show called Clash of the Choirs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, you know, already, so this was two years ago, we're talking 2013, all of a sudden I'm all over the country auditioning thousands of uh, underprivileged people, really, but amazing talent coming from all over the place, coming from the mountains in, uh, in, in Nelspreet. Uh, what am I thinking of? Yeah. Which area in Mpumalanga? Which yeah. area? One of well, the areas in Mpumalanga? Let's just, just blank it. The mountains of Mpumalanga. <laughs> okay. yeah. But you know, really, I mean, underprivileged people who are yeah. amazingly talented who got into the choir, into these choirs, working with people like Zwai Bala and uh, Kai and Teto. Uh, and, and and finding talent in parts of South Africa that mm. no one else was looking, yeah. you know, and being able to develop that talent. And it wasn't just a few kids. We're talking uh, you know, seven choirs, 140 choir members, but that doesn't, um, I mean, that that's just what it was whittled down to, you know. Yeah. We, we auditioned, I'm sure, at least 10, 15,000, yeah. um, you know, kids, artists, adults, whatever it may have been. Uh, you know, to become members of these choirs, and I'm still in touch with a lot of these choir members from the two years I did Clash of Choirs. Mm. Uh, they're kind of proud of, of the influence um, that I had on them because the big thing about the show is whatever knowledge they gain on the show, they now go back to their uh, choirs, their communities, and impart that knowledge. I could never do that in, in one small school. Yeah, I could never spread. The knowledge that I've learned as a teacher, as a musician, as an artist, um, like that. And then, of course, um, what was born out of that, I, I suppose, uh, without me realizing, I was partially auditioning to become um, the musical director and then, of course, in 2014, the musical mentor on Idol's essay. And that's just, it's, it's a similar kind of platform. Yeah. You're mentoring this potential great talent. And I must tell you that. A lot of the contestants from 2013, I can't really speak to 2014 yet, but I can tell you that a lot of the contestants from 2013 who got into the top 10 uh, are, starting, are starting to make waves, mm -hmm. they, uh, which is great to see because part of my goal, especially with idols, was that people don't forget the top 10 or at least yeah. something happens with them. You know, yeah. all too often, even if you get into the top 10 of idols, nothing happens with your career. I want to know. 
uh, you know, and I had a vested interest in making sure that the top 10 get somewhere. Because it mustn't just be about winning. The winning must be about, of course it is about winning, but you want to know that the top 10 can walk away and take something out of the, the project. No, absolutely, and, and ultimately you want to know that with all these kinds of shows, that the people who get into these shows are, are learning something and ultimately that you're spreading your knowledge as far and wide as you can, yeah. which I did. Um, and that's really, uh, you know, I suppose it was one of the big goals of this retirement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now you've reached a point of, uh, I would say, really self. It's it's kind of a full circle moment because you're interacting with what you'd say the babies are. They come into into the space very innocent, very naive in a good way, and they're hopeful. They haven't yet experienced the the difficult part of the industry. What did meeting them teach you about yourself? Um, well, that, I mean, that's always the fascinating thing because then you're watching these guys on stage. And look, I mean, I'm not like the most... I don't love the stage that much. But <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I just say that. Maybe I, I just try and sort of... How can I say? Downplay. Downplay. But watching them on stage sometimes I was like, <laughs> I, can, I can do that, you know, <laughs> and, and you know, it was like, I can still do that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe I want to do that, you know, yeah. and, and beyond that, there were, you know, I've written and produced quite, quite a lot of music over the last, let's say, four years since my retirement for other artists, Yeah. Um, but there were lots of experiences that, you know, have, have happened, well, there were, there were some quite traumatic experiences yeah. that I had over the last four years. At the same time, there have been some amazing experiences. And I was writing all this stuff down. I was creating new songs. Yeah. I can't stop doing that. I've been doing that since I was five, six, seven years old. Yeah. Um, and it's just part of, my, it's part of my life. But a lot of those songs are very personal. And a lot of those songs I couldn't give to other people. So they've yeah. been sitting around waiting. And of course, while I've been watching these idol contestants and Clash of Choir and Clash of the Choir's contestants and all these people performing, I've been thinking, I think my stuff would still work. I think there's there's a place for this new music. And the thing is, your music, though, you know, is not even. I wouldn't call it new. I've always felt that your music is timeless. I think the music that you write, because of its, it's it it's so genuine and it's so difficult to genreize, if that's even a real word. Your music is very, very timeless. I, I know that I've had sessions with you when we're digging through these drawers of endless songs that you may have even forgotten about that you've written, you know, maybe even when you were 12. Yes, when you were 12. And they're still relevant today. So even when you say to me, I could do this, people forget that the nerves are there forever. I, I, I say this to people where they say, oh, I'm like, if you think Beyonce is not nervous every time she gets on stage, you are fooled. It's still yeah. scary. Yeah. So when was the last time you were on stage? Other than Idols. Um, Other than Idols. Yeah, no, Idols doesn't count. Well, look, uh, I was, uh, there was this TV show called Strip Down on Channel O. Yes. And just as I was finishing uh, the 2013 season of SA Idol, um, my sort of partner in crime, musical partner in crime, of course, he's now not the young man that I sort of discovered and nurtured or whatever. His name's Chad Alexander. I call him the Chad. Um, he got the gig as musical director on this TV show called uh, Strip Down. And uh, one of the artists who was supposed to be in the show dropped in at the last minute. As, as happens, you know, a as lot happens. in this business. <laughs> um, sorry about that. <laughs> 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 um, Okay, so, so he, you know, but Chad, the whole band actually that plays for Strip Down is my band. Mm. They've been playing our music since 2007. So, uh, you know, Chad was like, well, why, don't, why don't you guys bring in R.J. Benjamin? So, uh, because they were like, we know his music. Uh, so it's pretty basic. This is a simple thing, you know? Yeah. So they brought me on. We didn't even have to rehearse. We just picked songs. And uh, all of a sudden, after, you know, years and years of not performing, I did the stripped down, stripped down poems. Which became jammed stripped down. 
It was a jam. <laughs> it was a jam, but it was fun, and I think you could. Uh, I think for the viewers, they. Uh, I mean, especially based on the response I saw, they were like, "Wow, I haven't seen RJ in ages. You know, it looks so cool. I love his music." Da da da, which was refreshing for me because yeah. I just don't do it anymore. Yeah. I, I must tell you, my voice. Uh, need, need, I, I realized after that that um, I was very under practiced. That you know, <laughs> when you are a teacher or a musical director or a mentor, you're not practicing. Uh, so my voice was tired after like song two. I was just at, at that at that point it was like survival mode. And we had we had least three four. Because people forget that this is a muscle, and if you're not regularly training it, the only time you actually sing is in the little moments of dem demonstrating yeah. to your students. But they're the ones that are going to be going through the stamina of rehearsing over Absolutely. and over and over again. You yeah. never have to do it. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I, um, I mean that, that okay, I got a bit of a shock. I won't lie. <laughs> my, my voice was just like, what is going on here? Because it wasn't used to. It. I suppose it's like going to gym for the first time in yes. five years, and yes. then and then you and, and then you, you feel like you're paralyzed. Yeah. The day afterwards, it takes you over. You like struggling up the stairs. Yeah. You know, same kind of feeling. Um, but I mean, when I watched the, because I don't like watching myself ever. It's the worst. Um, you know. And and so, but when I, of course when I watched, um, I was kind of forced to watch, you know, by my uh, uh, girlfriend, and um, and she she sort of I think she sort of made me watch it because I heard it, you know, sort of peeked around. <laughs> okay, it's not bad. Oh, okay. Wasn't as so bad as you do. Pretty good. Okay. Um, you know, and there was positive comments, and I think a lot of that just kind of. It, it, it was that um, brain worm that was saying you can still do this, you know. So um, that affirmation that was. You know exactly. I, look, I, I didn't form for an entire year after mm. that, and then of course there was the Idols performance. So, um, but as you say, maybe that doesn't count. So I don't perform a lot anymore. I just really don't. Um, but of course that um, show, that performance started to inspire me, which is why I started to create what we now have, which is the good story. That you could be so cruel, so cruel, yeah, that I only ever loved you, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. And she didn't really want me to, no, 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 I didn't think that I could fall so hard.